It really is good to be here. What if, last time I was here in uh, Kenora, it was about 20 years ago, it was sunny. So I do know that does happen. So uh, um, answer that. As you can tell from my first slide, I didn't want to hide the fact that uh, most of these slides were taken from a talk that Doug Sider, a colleague of mine, a public health physician at Public Health Ontario, did for the Ontario College of Family Physicians on this subject back in November. I could have, I could have uh, pretended it was mine, but I want to give Doug appropriate credit for the, the work he actually put into uh, these slides. And I can say, it's Lyme disease. No, we have no conflicts of interest. No one's going to pay us to do this kind of stuff, right? <laughs> so basically, we'll talk a bit about how you get Lyme disease. I mean, I think for many of you, you know this. We'll talk a bit about you know the diagnosis and treatment of the disease and, and frankly, talk about some of the, the controversial issues, especially at the end, about you know what is post-treatment Lyme and what is chronic Lyme or what it isn't. And um, I will editorialize a bit, but I'm being... But I'm being constrained now because I have a tape recorder on. Otherwise, I could be a, I could be a, a little less political, or I could be more political, but whatever. So let's start off with what the ministry is doing in, in the area of uh, a Lyme. They've come out with a, a bit of a, what, a st provincial strategy, 10 steps. Um, they all make sense, a little bit motherhood, apple pie. It's, you know, what they basically be doing at the provincial levels, they've been getting stakeholders together to talk. Uh, and I've been involved with some of those meetings, and it's kind of interesting because they get, they get different associations involved, so it's like the camping association and the people from the various uh, parks and uh, hunting and fishing and things like that. A lot of people are interested in this because they're concerned Lyme disease could actually scare people away from participating in the activities of which they make their, their livelihood. Uh, and at the same time, you have your usual activists who are trying to push an agenda. And, Nina Aaron, who's from the ministry, uh, I mean, I'm amazed. I'm sitting on this teleconference and there's all sorts of, I don't know if anyone here is a naturopath, but some people are talking about all the advances in naturopathic medicine for Lyme disease. And I'm, and I'm going like this, and, and, and Nina's just so political, saying, great, but let's move on to other speakers. So, uh, so it's a very, you can imagine, with all that pressure going on to, our, to various MPPs and things like that, there's an awful lot of pressure on the ministry in terms of how to deal with this. Now, we're not ministry, we're related to the ministry, or at least they pay us, and you know, we provide the science, they do the politics, and as I've explained to a number of people, you know, sometimes the politics doesn't follow the science, for obviously all sorts of reasons. But it is reassuring to note that um, there's been a lot of push in terms of the whole issue of prolonged or protracted treatment, antibiotic treatment for quotation marks chronic Lyme disease and people have been pushing the minister on that and he has actually been public saying that he's not going to endorse something in which the science doesn't exist. And I wish I could turn this off. I'm going, our minister of health said that. <laughs> but leaving at that, I mean, it's reassuring and the ministry is reassured, we're reassured because you just thought this was going to be one of those things that was going to be another one of, shall we say, <laughs> Let's leave it at that. I just said it's not on the tape. But, but in terms of, you know, the 10-step plan, you, I mean, you can read this, you know, you know access, and mainly that's access to information, intergovernmental um, cooperation, because the federal government has had some task force, and there's a report coming out. And then one of the reasons why that report has been delayed, because it was supposed to be out in, in April, is some of the advocates will not endorse this, so they don't want the, the report released. So just to, because, I mean, the report kind of makes sense. Doesn't say what they want, so you can, you guys know this is why you're here. It's this is this is more politics, I think, than medicine in many ways, but not totally. And, you know the issue about connection, trying to get different agencies to talk to each other, be effective. You know, providing information. And this is where the provinces really take some some good leadership, trying to get the signs up. So there's a lot of if you go to provincial parks now, you will see some signs outside about you know watching for ticks and wear the clothing, and they now have those commercials out there. And I, I think that's what we need to do is, you know, take a bit of a prevention strategy um, and looking for ticks. Uh, we're, you know, we're, whether we should, everyone who I think they have a tick should be sending it to, to their health unit. Well, um, well I'm not going to go there, um, but because it becomes rather interesting what the kind of, what the stuff that gets sent uh, to the lab is, but regardless. But the whole issue about protection, you know, what is, you know, getting the technical reports out, trying to disseminate 
where the disease is now established. Because the reality is, if you're living in a part of this province where the ticks are not infected with Lyme, and you get bitten by a tick, you're not going to get Lyme. And granted that we now have, you know, whether it's because of global warming or climate change or whatever you want to call it, you know, the fact that we do have ticks now along the border with the U.S. that do, that in fact do have Lyme is clear. Uh, certainly in eastern Ontario where I'm from, uh, to the Kingston area clearly has well-established Lyme. You certainly have Lyme in the uh, around the Golden Horseshoe, like from the Hamilton to Niagara area. These are now well-established area, as you would have with uh, Pelee Island. And, you know, th it is now creeping north and creeping in into this area as well, although probably not as well-established. 